All right, today we are reviewing this book, The Demon and the Quantum, from the Pythagorean Mystics to Maxwell's Demon and Quantum Mystery. And so this is a father-son book project, and the father is Marlon, Marlon Scully. And I didn't know this, but he pioneered the whole concept of the quantum eraser. And the, um, the quantum eraser is the ability to use a, a photon diode that has um, a zero rest mass, so it doesn't have any um, uh, kinetic energy against the particle going through the double slit experiment. So you're able to um, erase the information of the, of the path of the particle um, and without disturbing the path of the particle. And this, this concept of quantum eraser proved that the um, Heisenberg uncertainty principle is not due to a, um, a momentum of the um, particle of the detector of the slits, the actual slits that the particle is going through. So Einstein was arguing that he argued with um, with Bohr that if you have a um, a there will be a, a slit recoil based on the momentum. Um, so that you think of the momentum as actually the angle, um, and so which is the P is for momentum. And then, so the, um, so essentially um, what this book is proving is that the particle momentum, the, the um, information is what uh, controls the origin of the uncertainty, Heisenberg uncertainty of position and momentum, and that the information is based on the the photon um, entanglement. And so essentially the, um, the kinetic energy of the photon is actually the um, relativistic mass from the the negative frequency and reverse time of the photon. And so, um, this is the, the, this was de Broglie's law of phase harmony, which is essentially everybody got, um, misguided by Planck's constant because as they go into this they go through the whole history of um entropy and thermodynamics and um and what does that mean in terms of um Planck's Planck's constant and it's all based on logarithms, right? And so the essentially the whole point of the logarithm is that you're you're using a average, a geometric mean average, so that you're having your. You have to, um, in order to, to to do work, is based on machines. You have to have a heat sink, that that essentially is the same as the quantum eraser because you have to. Um, you can you can think of the heat as the um, frequency of the electron is it when it's 
a a molecule is in a um or particle is in a uh excited state which is essentially the same as increasing the temperature as the heat but you're doing it based on the frequency and so so Planck's constant is the average energy of light and and so what what Heisenberg um, proved was that the the uncertainty principle of um, position and momentum as the direction of the velocity is um, equal to Planck's constant as the average energy of light. But what this book is showing is that the the light is actually the information and you can then you can change the information as a reverse time um, quantum entanglement and therefore um, the information has a uh, negative entropy and so the um, <clears throat> the uh, he goes into the whole history of lasers from masers and the what makes this book so great is that um, this um, Marlon Scully he worked he worked with all these guys so he knew them all you know he knew Heisenberg and uh, Swinger and uh, all these <clears throat> top physicists and <clears throat> so they go into the Stern Gerlach experiment as being the really real key <clears throat> to essentially equating the entropy principles um, as based on the information of the mic magnetic moment and that's how spin was uh, discovered as an inherently relativistic property that's non-commutative and this is what uh, Pasquale Gordon argued from the beginning but then his math was wrong in the statistics and so his it was the uh, um he was corrected by um, uh, I can't remember who corrected him originally, but Dirac and uh, Gordon published together. And so, anyway, the um, what essentially what they're realizing is that the you have to take into account the um, relativistic mass from the momentum of the light, and this is what. De Broglie originally argued, and it's funny that the book doesn't the book doesn't go into to De Broglie obviously um, because De Broglie was misled by Planck also who was relying on this average energy of light by ignoring the um, non commutative uh, time and frequency so he was just getting his frequency of the energy of light as a as an intensity by converting it to a density by the amplitude squared from the magnitude using the, uh, so that the imaginary number gets canceled out. And so therefore you, you lose the um, relativistic mass of light as the negative frequency and reverse time and uh, force of the light. You have to call it force because it's before Intensity, is energy has to be uh, from the amplitude squared as intensity, which is the probability measurement. But what they're saying is you don't, you don't have to even use probabilities. You can just know from the uh, quantum eraser, you can have a definite knowledge um, based on the photon that has the zero um, rest mass. And so it's not imparting any kind of momentum to the um, particle based on the classical amplitude definition of uh, momentum. But if you if you take the de Broglie um, meaning of momentum as um, inverse to the wavelength, then you understand that the um, the uh, 
since a, a, a photon doesn't have any rest mass, then de Broglie argued that a photon actually has a mass from the the momentum as um, inverse to the the wavelength. So it's a um, it's a reverse time because the the energy, as Heisenberg realized, the energy is non commutative due to the frequency. So the um, you have to. <clears throat> Alain Kahn's big point is you have to take the inverse frequency. <coughs> I had a bunch of cayenne earlier, so that's why my throat dried out. <coughs> so, um, So essentially, what they're proving is that the um, the double slit uh, paradox of the wave interference is due to quantum non-locality as the foundation of reality, and the quantum non-locality is not a um, artificial experimental creation as the normal um, interpretation of quantum physics argues that the, you have to create quantum entanglement. But what they're saying is no. Um, the quantum non-locality is guiding the particle from the future as the um, reverse time and negative frequency. So you get this opposite phase as the information. Um, this is essentially the non-commutative phase in the um, double slit experiment um, based on using the quantum eraser that doesn't it doesn't affect the particle at all, though based on the classical um, momentum and from the the kinetic energy as mass. So the the as um, Penrose emphasizes, the mass actually originates from frequency because the mass originates as frequency. Then you can have this reverse time a signal from the future. That's secretly guiding the particle. And this is, uh, he quotes uh, uh, Arach, uh, Yakir Aranhoff, because uh, Yakir Aranhoff then used um, Scully's, Scully's um, quantum eraser to um, do the um, weak measurements, is what they call it, before it's, before the. Um, collapse of the wave function kicks in as a strong measurement as per uh, von Neumann's experiments. So here we're back at the end. This is what Einstein tried to argue and that and then Bohr came back and said no if the if the uh, slit was able to have a mo momentum that means it has to be have a small enough classical mass where the the quantum uncertainty principle um, kicks in, and therefore you wouldn't know the exact location of the particle, and so you'd have the same problem where you'd have the uncertainty, quantum uncertainty. So I haven't quite finished the book because now they're getting into uh, free will and consciousness, and this gets us back to um, Penrose, you know, arguing that the the free will. It's, but the 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 issue here is that before it's random, the whole point is that because you're using the photon detector, then um, it's proven that the quantum eraser is not random. It's actually a, a, a certain certain result based just on the information without even um, any any kind of interference. Um, and therefore there, it's proven that there is this, um, pilot wave from the future, um, purely due to the information as mathematics. And so this, this proves that mathematics, um, trumps or, uh, 
is more powerful than uh, physics. And that's a, that was a big debate: is that what 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 comes first, the the it or the bit? You know, the, is the mathematics primary to the physics or not? And this is this proves that information is um. So now they go um. So it's they're saying it proves that free will is is exists and and then they bring it back to the Pythagoreans. Um. And how you know. Does these these were the other thing they point out is Heisenberg lied to the Nazis. He lied to a physicist who was an SS plant, and the physicist wanted to build the nuclear bomb. And so Heisenberg he created these fake equations, and he says, "Look, it's there's no way that you can split the atom to create enough energy for the bomb." And then, so that's how he convinced the Nazis not to um, pursue the bomb, uh, nuclear bomb. So, and then they, and then they, since they withheld the real science, then the the Nazis couldn't figure out the the actual the real science for the nuclear bomb. So, Heisenberg, his um, his matrices math then uses the discrete frequency as the inverse frequency. And this is Alain Kahn's big point of using Heisenberg again to prove the, the non-commutative um, time frequency as the inherent uh, non-local source of reality. Um, so it's like Heisenberg. And then, and then he worked with Pasquale Gordon, but they... They disagreed. I think it was it was Heisenberg that proved that uh, Pascal Gordon's uh, statistics were wrong, and that. But but later, when they incorporated the spin as being relativistic, then they um, then the uh, non commutative math of Gordon, Pascal Gordon was um, corroborated, and he was saved by that. And then and now they're bringing back. Pascual Gordon for the unified field theory there. So here is here they're getting into Roger Penrose. So they this is why I didn't I didn't even read this part of the book yet, but they're they're essentially they're corroborating what I just said right now. You know that the so the um, I'll finish reading the book um, word for word, but um, it's really the um, Alan Khan who. He proved that it's the um, rational, the integers, the discrete. Um, he calls them ar archaic integers, and he says once you understand the concept of the, of the. Um, see here, they get into the, the logarithms in the in the end notes, and if you understand the the non commutative um, discrete ratios, as therefore proving that you have a less than positive. Um, Solution for the imaginary um, phase, so, so that the therefore it's a geometric dimension of zero, but it still has a positive volume as a anti gravity force, and and um, so they they go into all this uh, connection of the the logarithms to the um, to the you know to the the thermodynamic the the exponential, you know, but his whole, see, his whole point is that, um, this, when you do the quotient of the, um, of the inverse of the exponential, then it's a non-commutative time and frequency, and that's directly the same for the music theory. And so that proves that this quotient, when you subtract it from one for the, the unit sphere as the, in, as the inverse frequency, in the um, inner product of the matrices, the four by four matrices, and then you, or the two by two matrices, then you, then you um, prove that it's always a negative number, and therefore it's a geometric dimension of zero for the um, as an infinite uh, positive um, pressure that's anti gravity. So the black hole that created the whole universe starts out from a um, reverse time signal uh, that's anti gravity.
as it as this non commutative time frequency uh, due to the virtual photons as a non local signal. So I'm going to end it right there and uh, finish reading the book. And thanks.